Hello and welcome to the Fireside Chat on Vendor Risk and Agile Cloud Contracting. All of us know that cloud contracting requires due diligence from pre-contract vetting to monitoring ongoing activities. So please welcome Sachin Kavalkar, CISO and Global Head Information Security and Quality, Niamo, to discuss how to create cloud security guidelines, address security risk in the contract and ongoing vendor risk management. A very warm welcome to you, Sachin. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here and giving this opportunity. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, so it's a pleasure for me to host you today in CXO TV. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. How crucial is uh, cloud contracting to enable long-term association and achieving the business goals from cloud initiatives? Yeah, so being into this industry for past 19 years and since now we are overcoming the generation by generation and we have seen the various types of risk which are getting evolving with a lot of technology changes. I guess cloud is, is now the only area wherein people are looking for and that is what a future is. So cloud is a revolution. Organizations are pouring a lot of and the billions and billions of amount to make the best use of it. So since now the most of the organizations are moving from the traditional data centers because the lot of cost, maintenance, efforts are in wire, uh, uh, are into it. So that's why it is cloud is very important. The second the important part which we need to understand is cloud is not a place, it is a strategy. So we need to make sure that the risk needs to be looked into accordingly. It is a framework for the future success and most of the organization has gained and the value out of it. And really they are seeing the cloud which is something which is will be a part of our future from the local on-premise environment. So choosing the right cloud model and the deployment of your organization's framework into that, it's something important and that need to be taken care of very rightly. So when we see that what exactly the association of the vendors are, how the risk needs to be calculated, we need to look the various dimensions of it. The very first dimension I will say, like choosing the right vendor, the, that is important because now we have a lot of vendors who are available depending on upon the size of the vendor, what services they are providing, what are their capabilities, what is their existence in the market. So all those parameters play a crucial role while we are selecting the vendors. And now why we, as we have seen that the what services which you are shifting to the cloud and what are the services again which we are leveraging from the cloud service provider, that is something important. From the crucial aspect perspective, I will say the critical components are like when we are relying on the cloud service provider, definitely a lot of investment is going to made and it will be a one-time investment because when we say that the entire environment is going to shift from one place to another place, it is, it is a tough task for all the organizations. So while selecting that the scalability, performance, reliability, availability, security, governance, compliances, SLAs, the various as compliances in terms of legal, regulatory, specific to the geographicals, because now we have seen a lot of the regulations which are coming in, a lot of the regulations which are demanding for the data localization into the same geolocation. Now, whether that vendor is having the capability to provide and cater your services is something important. So all these aspects needs to be looked into while, while we are choosing the vendor. And that need to be a long-term strategy planning at the time of initial uh, the decisions only that I can say on this. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, as you rightly said, the, uh, the, the basically the, because of the benefits of the cloud, uh, the cloud services are growing and, uh, but uh, buying cloud services is different from buying uh, traditional outsource services. So uh, according to you, what are the common errors uh, IT teams make in uh, cloud contracting terms? The selection is again one of the important criteria and also the errors or the risks or the issues associated with that, that need to be considered at the time of initial phase only. That I feel as a CISO, it's a very important task and every organization should be must looking into it because it's a one-time investment as, an, as we discussed, it's a huge cost and it's a, a migration from one generation to the another uh, the generation I, we can say so while we are doing that your strategies needs to be very clear because that could possibly because what you are going to shift why we are going to shift what applications you wanted to shift that is something important 
and that should be considered that probably might be one of the error but looking from the vendor perspective the since there are the various vendors which are available what are the various the fallback plans they have in terms of any disaster or in terms of any issues which are happening are they able to provide you the availability part are they able to provide you the regular continual services as as they have mentioned into that so that is something which which typically need to be looked into the skilled and the subject matter experts either from the both the sides like even on the the organization who is going to migrate it and even from the service provider do they have a subject matter and skilled resources to provide and give you the services what you are expecting because once you deploy it then the challenges starts coming it more you are prepared and more the error free you are then the challenges will get mitigated or avoided at the initial phase only and then it will be a smooth journey and then the complexity of the components integrations will not come into so many business opportunities taking place inside a cloud the cost of cloud misconfiguration of the pure cloud optimization can be very high understanding the responsibilities of cloud team as well that what exactly the services which they are going to do and what are the other services your local it team is going to do then the technical controls like migration of all the data what data you are going to migrate are you going to migrate in a one uh, one stroke or you are going to plan it how your backup provisions has been managed properly the misconfigurations which may lead to a major problem that need to be a uh, one of the area need to be looked into while migrating a data what exactly you are going to migrate it that is again a part of you are the error free uh, the journey and then failing to delete what exactly you are required so i guess these are the technical and then business combination of business and technical uh, the things needs to be looked into to avoid the errors uh, and to have a great cloud journey yeah absolutely so yeah cloud providers are actually you know they they offer low cost and flexible solutions because uh, uh, they standardize their offerings for multiple customers uh and uh, accordingly you know cloud providers are less likely than uh, traditional outsource providers to adapt their solutions to the customers need or negotiate contract uh, terms to meet the customers requirements uh, so uh, exactly. you know yeah and yeah the important, important part here is because you know your organization more better you know your customers more better so while we are doing those things needs to be con- considered and need to be set up to the uh, vendor so that they are providing the right services to you as desired and ex- expected because now when we are saying we are migrating from the on premise to the cloud environment ultimately the entire environment is going to be hosted which will be your business which is now a core part of your business and which is a heart so when we are saying that okay it's a production or it's a live environment every component need to be very thoroughly looked into so yeah. from both the side this is very important to have a uh, all the uh the possible errors or the risk which probably may occur in future need to be considered then and there only and uh, the designing and developing and deployment uh, if we do it in the right way i guess probably then it will give the the right outcomes yeah yeah so it's all about the right fit between the cloud solution and our business needs that that's what you mean exactly. yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. so uh, that brings to me the next question you know uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the contract side of it so what are the key risk and challenges in contracting for cloud services to be considered and managed by the technology leaders uh from the technology lead perspective now uh as as we as we keep on saying that there are multiple the cloud vendors as well but even if they are the best cloud vendors ideally because they are a part of your business most of the well established businesses they have a risk assessment strategy any it vendor because in future that cloud will be become a going to be a part of your it vendor list Now, when we say he is going to be a part of my it vendor list the proper and thorough the risk assessment has to be performed even before contracting that i will say to understand the capabilities the capacities the way they are going to services the slas the security risk which are currently existing with the vendor the issues and the incidents which has happened in the past with the vendor the availability risk if there are any issues which has happened in the past as well 
the risk related to the lack of control which they have not properly maybe deployed at their environment and then maybe what type of accesses they are giving which is one of the very important part what type of accesses they are giving maybe a physical access maybe a logical access because ultimately it's your environment and you don't know where your cloud is because it is a virtual everything is virtual so this parameters needs to be very properly considered when we are doing a thorough risk assessment before even assigning a contract i guess that will give you the complete clarity that whom you are going to get a business into and how it will be beneficial for you and how you are going to achieve your goals and objectives from the challenges perspective i guess security is again is one of the important part because we are hosting everything to the cloud on premises we know because it's a tradition we are keep on doing since ages so we know the what are the challenges risk associated with that and we are we keep on mitigating those so we are aware about it but since it is a new environment everything will be new so for the companies who are going to adopt the cloud then the they need to con consider the security what are the you know, how who are managing the cloud what is the governance compliances selecting the right set of controls into the contract how is the spend which we are going to do uh, on on the cloud part because uh, it is not only hosting on a cloud you need to also buy the solutions from the service provider now what are the various solutions which you need to deploy on your part on on your environment that is something need to be discussed decided and the leaders uh, need to be much aware about it considering the type of business most of the businesses since they are having the uh, regulatory implications like the because since the, the way they are managing the business sometimes it's a health related data where the hipaa requirement is mandatory card holder data where financial institutions it's mandatory to comply with pci dss or there are a lot of lot many regulations wherein they need to fulfill that criteria so it is always important that how you are going to make sure that you are also complying with those by virtue of you are deploying it on the cloud environment segmentation uses and adoption is again one of the important parameter need to be looked into and if you are migrating for the first time again as i mentioned what you are migrating why you are migrating that always need to be looked into and as a overall consolidated looking into all this the pointers i guess uh, maybe uh, we can we can deploy it in a smoother way yeah absolutely so according to you security leaders should first assess their own teams and uh, then the contracts and finally move to understanding what is required in the cloud environment to manage the risk exactly exactly and it should not happen that because the lack of the knowledge or the lack of uh, understanding or what exactly the strategy is it should not be a just a overnight decision of okay, we wanted to move it to cloud the the thought process behind it need to be first articulated and need to be discussed and then exactly it is it should not be like that okay everything 100% we need to migrate it the things which are really not required which is which are your internal business i guess there is no need of it probably but the things which you have committed to customer and probably for the more secure faster cheaper the way you want i guess that need to be looked into uh, for migration to the cloud so all these challenges i guess first they need to jot down and need to be looked into and then if you work upon it i guess uh, then it's it's a success story yeah sure sure so uh, how do we address uh, the cloud security guidelines and uh, procurement and legal concerns with cloud contract uh, cloud contracting so if you can elaborate a little more yes this is again i guess one of the very important question kalpana uh, because when we say contract contracts are typically for more than 3 years or at least minimum for 3 years though the clauses are there but yes and see while we say that contract is a document wherein we can extend or terminate but logically or on the ground it is not as easy as the termination because when we say we have completely migrated it it, it can't be just like a hours job to do the things and to change the decisions and to change to the another service provider because the effort which we have put in the architectures the deployments the applications the data migrations everything what we are doing it is is something important while taking this cautious decision the contracting is a important part that need to be very thoroughly carefully looked into the first the important part is choosing the right vendor what you want to 
there are multiple vendors who are available in the market but who is a right fitment for you that is something we need to look into based upon that the capabilities of that particular vendor which will fulfill your business needs and demands and objectives i guess then probably the initiation of contract can be started now when we say contracting now even from the contracting perspective the very important perspective is like the vendor should be able to give you the services as sla defined and as agreed upon the even from the vendor side the cloud service provider they should be having the skilled resources available to make sure that in case of any disaster or issue they are able to fulfill your requirements so it should be a un uninterrupted 99.999% availability business which they have committed and need to be looked into so availability is again one of the important part and as i mentioned that it it is just like a pay and a procure so then after whatever the requirements you have need to be well articulated and documented into the contract once this is a draft is created i guess probably you also need to look the legal regulatory compliances even contractual compliances because customer compliances nowadays are very important when we agreed upon that like five few countries like uh, china russia south korea there are various the data privacy regulations where data localization is mandatory now if your service provider don't have a local data center available in that geo location then probably it will be a additional investment for you to look for the extension of that or maybe probably you need to create your own data centers in that regulation because they don't allow you to take the data outside of your country so the vendor need to be also have the capability to uh, uh, cater your services then the compliances regulations ideally the vendor which we are choosing he should be compliant with the various regulations which are applicable as a cloud service provider or which are applicable as a as a local uh, legal requirements to the service provider and then considering all this i guess probably it need to be also looked into and vetted by the legal teams and possibly i guess then then we can uh, proceed with the contract part with the club yeah definitely uh, that's a fair point the legal teams can actually vet it uh, but uh, you know as uh, we discussed that the cloud providers are less likely to adapt their solutions to the customers needs or negotiate contract teams uh, terms to meet the customers requirements so for in this scenario how do we do the due diligence to determine what gaps exist between your our requirements and the provider services and whether there are workarounds to fill the gaps cloud service provider is going to be one of your component of your it list it vendor list probably all the due diligence related to the vendor management or the vendor risk assessment needs to be carried and performed then uh, the what are the various plans even from the cloud service provider as well how they are going for the expansion what are their strategies what they have agreed and discussed and are they going to fulfill it are there any issues which has happened in the past wherein probably that might be a concern for you and then if there are any issues arising of it uh, from the technical perspective technology perspective what are their mitigation plans available do they have a right set of skills and resources available to mitigate it in terms of any issues and will they able to give you the services as desired and as you are looking for so if these things if we looked into uh i guess definitely that will be a big help a uh, lot of the times even now uh, most of the cloud service providers being they are the global service provider like amazon google azure uh, microsoft uh, being they are providing to the large tier one organizations it's mandatory for them to go through the various audits now when we say audits sometime it's a pci dss it's a health regulation requirement hipaa audits or iso audits or soc 1 soc 2 audits maybe possibly we can we can go through their reports and possibly look into the critical controls uh, that what are the audit auditor remarks given on their control part as well so that will give some give you the some fair idea about what is their environment how they are managing it what are the challenges even they are facing what are the budgets and strategy planning from their side in terms of mitigations resources the people the data center expansions budgets everything if they have well in place i guess that will solve the purpose
Yeah, sure. So, are uh, according to you, are there uh, any crucial and non-negotiable elements of a uh, of a cloud contract? Uh, you know, which is beneficial for the customer? Uh, I will say security, compliance, governance, uh, availability, uh, performance. These are the non-negotiable and very very crucial. Rest of the things are manageable as we grow uh, step by step. Definitely at every step when we are putting a lot of thought process for uh, going to the next step definitely those things will be taken care but uh, on the basic this these things are very much important and they should be having the desired set of tools technology or rather the set of solutions available so as and when you demand for it you need for it they should be able to give it back to you and it should be just like a plug and play and then you are, you are uh, fulfilling your requirements so I guess these are the four or five major crucial non-negotiable uh, the elements because when we say we are migrating and it is like a live and production environment for you, then security is, is is sitting on the very top, and then the regular governance, compliances, uh, regulatory requirements uh, uh, play a very important role along with availability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, developing that process is uh, really important. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what are the best practices you would suggest for contracting in order to avoid any conflicts and differences? <laughs> Though, I mean, it is more like a uh, sum <laughs> of whatever we have discussed. So, uh, the very first foremost is like you should be armed with the clarity on technical uh, services, security, data governance, service management requirements, and you can more effectively you know, integrate your select group of potential vendors. So, I guess that will help. Uh, even as I, as I discuss and as I mentioned that what are the various vendor technologies they are, how they are upgrading their technologies, what is their roadmap, investment on the various areas, uh, then the technology and the services roadmap, what they have and what their plans for, service delivery model for, the, for them, then the business terms like you know, insurance, the business policies, the operational reviews, how they are going to do what how frequently they do it what are the, the outcomes of it what are the learnings from it and how they are going to uh, remediate it the data insurance because now everything is is hosted on them in terms of any breach how they are going to ensure that data because sometimes it's a uh, required in cyber security world the cyber insurances are mandatory so same as we are hosting the data so what are the various data insurances uh, which they possess and how they are going to protect it the legal protections now in terms of like if there are any legal penalties or fines how they are going to help and support in that area so indemnification warranties then the intel intellectual property rights uh, also, one important part is, are there any dependencies on the fourth party? So when we say cloud is our the, the third party, are there any further contracts with the external parties? Fourth parties, do they have? And how they are also going to assess that risk and how the things and the controls are in place. So I guess these are the important areas uh, or the best practices uh, you know, uh, before contracting we should uh, look into to avoid any conflicts and differences. Yeah, and rather, I will, it would be a long-term association and a continual improvement in from, from the cloud service provider. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we can conclude like there are four key steps to create a holistic view of any security program that uh, first create a team and assess the risk, second develop processes, third analyze contract portfolios and lastly develop risk management programs. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And see, now uh, future will be a cloud only. That's for sure and no doubt about it. Now, since we are going from the traditional uh, environment to the cloud environment, I guess definitely there will be a lot of things which will be coming into. When we say we are improving with the technology, same time the risks are growing. So as a security leader, I can see that when we, when we upgrade or update something, immediately the new risk will coming in so it's a it's a uh, uh, what i can say uh, the game of uh, hide and seek so uh, from that perspective i guess uh, the things needs to be looked into and continual improvement uh, into the cloud environment is is a need of future so it should not be just like a, a we have established we have set up and then i guess 
uh, no one is looking into. So that should not be case. Continual improvement integrations, because now even a lot of application security, cyber risk, which are arising, network risk, a lot of ransomware attacks which are happening. So how we can strengthen our environment, safeguard our environment, uh, with the help of our service providers, if they have the functionality and services or various tools, technology and components available, how we can make a best use of it to further commit to our customers and to make sure that we are compliant with all the regulations, data privacy, security, contractual obligations, and then creating a robust model on the cloud, I guess. If we do that, uh, then it's a big success for any organization and the decision will be a right decision for uh, migrating from local to cloud environment. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So SLAs and contracts are one of the most preferred risk mitigation strategies, according to you. Yes, yes, yes. SLAs is again in terms of because we are also committed to someone uh, from the SLA perspective. So I guess that is something which we need to look into. It should not happen that uh, at the time of when we are pro we are providing a service to our customer, and there are some issues and because of the vendor issues, we are not able to. So it will be penalty for all of us. So I guess that that is important part. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Sachin. It was a complete pleasure talking to you today. And uh, pleasure is mine. Thank you so much once again for having this, you know, choosing this wonderful topic. And definitely we'll keep on discussing on a lot of uh, this, the security and cloud integrations and various topics in future. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.